morning, everybody. Let's give it a couple of seconds to uh, keep it going. Unless you said hi, Tom. With a, with a wave. And Freya. And Freya. Well, yeah. <laughs> that was specific to Tom, that. She usually says morning, guys, to us. But yeah. Morning, Alicia. <laughs> so, yeah, this is close to the uh, live stream. We're doing every Wednesday at 11 a.m. And we're doing various outdoor activities, nature activities, habitat activities. And can you guess what we're doing today? <laughs> today, we're going to be making bird boxes. So, bird boxes. It's kind of getting a little bit late in the season for them, but there is still time. There are still flirting birds looking for the nest site. So what we're going to do is we're just going to talk through how to make a simple bird box, a few variations you can make, why those variations exist, and what, yeah, where to put them. So we're over to Tom, who, yeah, is our woodwork expert, so we thought we'd bring him in. <laughs> yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm keeping busy, say. Uh, so. As I say, as Freya said, we're going to make a bird box today. Obviously, on my course, it takes all day because the, the students do absolutely everything. But I do, I've prepared quite a bit of it. But I'm going to show you planing, show you sawing, show you nailing, show you uh, using the drill to do the ball. Uh, firstly, I'm just going to show you two different bird boxes. It's like the best looking drill in soda. Yep, no, you'll get can't see it. Yep, so we've got the uh, robin box, which is slightly different. Uh, it doesn't have the hole, uh, it does have the slot. The reason for that is uh, basically robins are territorial. They, they like to look out where it's other birds want to be in and sit. So the fronts are the only difference. Apart from this one, it doesn't have a little lid, which will rectify it. Today. So first off, <coughs> That's just for you guys to see what I'm doing. So we're going to be cut, cutting the bottom first. No, we're not. Let's say this first. When you're cutting pieces of wood up, long lengths, always cut the longest length first. Because if you go with the shortest length, you might end up with not a lot. These bird boxes are used 4.5 metres. If you want to you know, go make one, that's how much you need to go and buy. Uh, the other difference with this, and some of the boxes you will see, is the back on some of them goes down. Now, we at Hollybush, we, we can sometimes make 50 of these, and we might have to store them. So storing with that back is very difficult. You just store them as you like. But that's, that's totally up to you if you want to have it a bit longer. And as Freya said earlier on, you can attach it in two points. If you're fixing it to a fence, that's perfect. But if you're going to fix it to a tree, having that bit that hangs down at the bottom is good. Because with, if you're fixing it on a fence or on a, on, if we're putting it on the end of the shed, you can just drill that in and that's fine. But if you're hanging it in on, on a tree, having that bit hanging down, it just gives you two fixing points because you can't nail or screw into trees without doing them damage or possibly doing self damage further down the line when someone's trying to chase it up. So yeah, that's the sort of where you make those variations within the use of them. Yep. 
So the, the first piece we got to cut is the back. As you can see, I've already cut the back, so that's all done. Uh, and then you will cut the sides, which, as you can see, are cut on an angle. Now, this angle, I'm actually a trained roofer, and this is the, uh, the angle you would use on a roof, such as a fan, things like that. And that angle is 22.5. Now, the way of getting that angle is to the tractor. I've got a bigger one here, and the red line is the angle. Yeah, so I would set, this is called the bevel, I would set it to that. So that's how I've got these angles. The other thing is you would keep this angle, because every single angle that isn't the right angle is going to be this point. Can I just make a little difference to that, in case it's, in case it's scaring people? Yeah. Is, if you do just do that, if you put these that way around, it's just a rectangle. So if you make a line that goes across like that on a rectangle, that's halfway, you sort of measure the distances there and there, that will actually make you the angle. So will, yeah, if you don't have access to a protractor and metal, that's the best thing to use, but you can do it just by measuring that side and measuring that side, and, it, and that one being the same as that one, and that will make the angle you need. And the angle for that, the measurements for that will be in the graphic we share later. Don't be thinking, where do I get a bevel? There is another option. There is another way as well. Sorry. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because you're putting them up each other, it doesn't matter. They're going to be exactly the same. But mm -hmm. slightly out. Okay. It's always better to get it done than panic that you might get it wrong. Yeah. They do like living in hedges, shoes, teapots, like... Birds, birds didn't live in bird houses all of their evolutionary path. So just some shelter is better than no shelter. But it's better if they're sturdier, they'll last longer, they're prettier. Yeah, yeah. no, that's fine. Okay. So we're going to put the bottom now. So I use a sliding uh, set square. And as you'll see when you get uh, measurements, this is uh, 10 centimetres. Okay, so I'm going to use my thing just go across here, and then we're going to show you how to solve properly. So this is a cross cut saw. So this is so you pop it up on. It's multi use. Uh, you can use it on most things. Use it in garden and woodwork. So the main thing about sawing is stick your finger out. Most people saw like that. If you're doing that. You're never going to saw properly. If that's out, this runs with this bone and this part of your arm. So we start off, use your nail. You're not going to cut through your nail. So keep it like that. Draw it back. non-sawing hand. So if you're holding the saw, that hand's going to be okay. The hand that you're holding the wood with, <coughs> just make sure you're wearing it well on that hand. If they are sharp, okay. Yeah, I'm struggling a little bit with that because this was wet. That, that's the reason. Right, the next adaptation that I've done, I've never seen this on the box, to be quite honest. Most bird boxes I can get the drill holes in the box. The biggest thing that kills chicks is moisture. So what we've done is take the edges off rather than the holes. The reason for that is the chick puts its leg through that hole. There's no way a chick can get to the So, you know, I forgot to say is, if you're doing work at home, these are great things. Uh, it's called a bench hook. Basically, it doesn't matter if the hole's all over it. It's, it's not precious. It doesn't matter how big it is. Bit of stuff at home, put an edge piece there, edge piece there, put some to your table, not going to damage the table, anything like that. Plus, you can always use it to do your cutting. So I don't have to use a clamp, it's not going to slide away. 
There's no measurement for this. It's a tiny little, tiny a, little corner. A little a triangle that yeah. you can easily get on. And it doesn't matter if we cut into this. It doesn't matter. It's better than your, your best French table or anything like that. Yeah, just use your second best French table. <laughs> or somebody else's French table. Yeah. <laughs> so that is all about done now. Uh, normally, when we process the people to explain the things, so if you have a look at this, Yep. So, I put the front, but we've still got sharp edges. So this works just the same, same way it holds it. We can just go, all we're doing, taking those edges off. Same with your finger as well. So, no precise measurement, it's just making it so it's, it's less harsh. I said we're using new wood for this, but you might not have access to brand new wood uh, if, if you don't have to get it, like, or you don't have a car to get it. That's quite often the fact of going to business and search a bit there. But um, you can just use recycled wood. One thing to be careful with is chips and things there. And if you've ever seen a brand new baked chip that's all bald and naked, really, really vulnerable. So you want to be careful about not using treated wood. So try to use untreated wood. So you can use something like old scaffold, scaffolding boards, something that's not covered in cement. You can use recycled wood. Just try not to use anything that's got too much or any chemicals and things on it. So try and know the source of the wood that you're using. But you can use recycled wood. They make quite a lot of scaffolding. You can go to an old build yard or something. They quite often have old bits of scaffold. They only use it over time. Very Keep that under there. 
That just holds it up while you nail it. So you use your fingers, keep that level, keep that level. You can use anything flat to go on there. So one thing with hammering is try and do it on the ground floor or in the cellar or outside in the garden. If you're living in a first floor, second floor or flat or something, your neighbours <laughs> won't love you. Like it's something with a sort of claw that goes straight through to soil is the best place to do hammering. <laughs> and exactly as Freya says, I'm I'm nearly exactly over the top top. It's good straight to the ground. Yeah. yeah. Two things about hammering I'd like to tell you. I see people hammering like that. Absolutely useless. Hold it on the end. You don't have to be going I'm tapping it. In. No power whatsoever. The other thing is, don't be too timid. Because every time you hit that nail, the molecules in the nail heat up. That's why you bend your nail. You're also, if you hold it there, you're much more like, you get much more power from this side. You've got the floor of leaders and physics, physics stuff. But also, just the basic level, if you hold it this here, if you miss, you're going to clout your knuckles, where if you miss here, you hit the hammer. And it's much better to whack the hammer than it is to whack the buttons. Next thing is, you know, a lot of people back. Always think of to be athletic. Always do the bit that you can see first. Always do the front. Just this one. But before we do that, how is the bird going to get We haven't done it all. So birds need four inch or ten centimetres for the nest. That's what they need. So their hole needs to be slightly above that. So, inch and a half down in the middle. And I've picked the worst <laughs> front I can possibly have <laughs> picked because there's a massive knot there. So, so not so where there's been a branch or something in the wood and it's basically a bit where the grain doesn't match up and because all of the grain so you can kind of see here the grain's sort of fairly straight and that's really easy to drill through but when you've got a knot all the grain of the wood because it's had the branch coming out it's all squiffy and loopy and going in different directions and it just it, it's hard to saw through it's hard to drill through it's hard to get everything to go the way you want it to go Quite often when you have you hit a bit of wood, you're really struggling with soaring. Something like it's been going fine, it's been going fine. What's going on now? You could quite often hit not wood. Yeah. And once you through it, it gets easier again. But it's it's remarkable how much a little divot like that can like impact. They're about six times harder than the wood around you. But it also means every time something's going a little bit wrong, you go, oh it's just a positive. Get that one. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a bit called a foss in a bit. I believe these are of Italian descent, and they're basically short uh, hole cutters. Now, if you haven't got one of these, you could use a, a flat bit, which is one of the bits you use for uh, cutting the locks out of doors. Exactly the same. These are just a bit safer and a bit sharp. As you can see, it's got a point on the top. Yeah, that's safety. So what we do is we get that point, and we put it where it needs to go, just give it a bit, yeah? If I didn't do that, and I just went like that, it'd just go like that. So, here goes. Meet, meet man versus not. This is probably a point to say, I don't know if you'll be able to hear background noise. Let me keep pointing you, Tom, but like, with this, you'll see that Tom's holding it. It's in that clamp thing that he's made. Like, he's holding it, he's pushing down hard. Because if you don't have it secured, when you try and do this, there's a lot of friction, there's a lot of pressure, not or no not, um, just the action of this big disc. If you don't have it fixed properly, it will spin. <laughs> Keep drilling, I think yeah. I'll just shout. The other thing is, if you shoulder a little bit, yeah. you put your weight to push it down. This might take a while. Yeah, drilling is something, but because it's... Uh... It's a one-sided motion, it's asymmetrical. You need to make sure that you're putting your strength and your core 
your te- use it like Tom's doing, lining it up, tensing your shoulders and keeping your back straight because it's actually something that people who are doing a lot of drilling and aren't doing, are doing it with their arms extended are doing it asymmetrically off to, on a one to the side. You can do your back in. If you've got back problems or if you don't want back problems you want to avoid getting back problems, do try and line up like Tom was saying. Because you can see it was hard work getting it through there. And if you're putting that tension on your back instead of tensing your core and doing it solid like that, yeah. So we line it to the bottom. And this might be going in like that. So we put the bottom one in. And then we line this up and pull it out. We need to. It's again keeping it even on both sides. That just needs pulling in. Well, listen, you have drilled the holes here, which you did say earlier. But if you're like, how is Tom going to get the in one hit? There are holes drilled. So if it's taking a few more hits for you without drill, drill holes, that's probably. Uh, Tom's just that good. Yeah, Tom is that good. That's, he's he's taking your time and just work with it. You don't put around. So. But yeah, there are already holes there. <laughs> and yeah, Tom's at the front. So there we have it. Back now. Do you want to take off any like major splinters though, because obviously you can get splinters, birds can get splinters too, so you do want to take off any particularly rough bits. But again, birds live in hedges, they're not that fussy. <laughs> so we pick our best side, you can see the metal coming out of it there, preserver. That's acting the front nicer side. So yet again, keep it flush at the bottom. Flush at the side. One thing, try to make sure I get the straight so you don't get the nails on the other side. Oh, we've got a question. Rob, oh, sorry, Bob Fish has asked what type of wood he uses. This is spruce pine. The reason why uh, it's relatively cheap, it's relatively uh, environmentally friendly, us so quickly. we can be using these within 16, 20 years. Uh, it's an easy wood to work with, it's nice and soft, uh, and it's, it's probably the cheapest wood you can buy as well. So. Yeah, if you can get yourself a hold of some scaffolding board or something like that, it's about the right dimension and it can be free. Scaffold board usually is fine as well. It's just stress grid, so that's where the pressure on it from the selling. If it snaps, you throw it away. It's probably selling it for being Right, Ray is going to show you how. <laughs> gloss you would see all the lines this isn't this is going outside so the smoother we can get it the nicer and the quicker i use a uh, an 80 grit which is a midpoint grit and i would suggest you never never buy sheets of sandpaper buy a roll and it'll last you months and it's so much better 
Thank you very much. So, you can see Tom's cut here. There's an angled cut there. We should have, anyone can see we never worked outdoors the amount of paperwork I brought out for this building. <laughs> so, as you can see, Tom's cut an angle here. Uh, the, to line up there so that is the top so that will slot on there and that matches there i would say if you don't want to cut an angle there because that is quite a fiddly thing to do and if you back to the it's better that you do it than worry too much about something you're not confident doing this is one where if you do this and it's not flush it's okay it's not perfect but it will work if it's just a right angle if it's a rough cut there and you can still lift it but if you can do the angle, that's great. And if you get one of the kits that Tom makes, so Tom does actually make kits where the bits are cut. So I think are they five pre So for a fiver, you can get all of these bits pre-cut, and then you just have to assemble it together. So you can get these angles, but you don't need need the angle. We have the so there's two things you can do this with. This is basically to make the hinge, and the hinge needs to be flexible so you can open the roof. But it also needs to be waterproof, ideally, because useful thing about roofs. So we did, we, you can use pond liner if you've got some offcuts of pond liner. But what we're using here is we've got some old inner tubes. So these are push bike inner tubes. You can use car inner tubes. You can use motorbike inner tubes as well. These are um, I just went into bike mill. Yeah, asked someone we know a bike mill, which is a bike recycling project in the city centre, and said. Have you got any old inner tubes? And you can do that at any bike shop, and chances are they've got a bin full of inner tubes, and they're going to say yes. You only really need one. You can see I've cut that in half. And then, yeah, or, but if you ever make a pond, you'll quite often have offcuts like this, where you kind of make a pond, you cut around the top, you've got all these scrappy bits. These are perfect as well, because they're thick, they're tough, they're waterproof. Same goes with the inner tube. You line it up across the top here, stretch it to the other side. It's probably better that it overlaps slightly than underlaps. Underlap word? Who knows? So, yeah, if it just pokes out slightly to that so right? And then get your scissors and just snip that. And there you go. And then it's actually it's got handy lines on it. It's, just, it's like it was made for it. And then cut along here. And there's no need to buy any of this. Like, this is a waste material for bike shops. And this is a waste material for people making pods. Like, you've just got to ask. And chances are the answer is yes. So line that up there. So you get it so it goes up this back section. And it goes flat on the top section. And get it go into the groove there, so putting the staple gun up into the joint. And just sort of, this is, a, this is a bit where it can kind of be, try and get them equally spaced as you can, just for aesthetics. But it doesn't matter if they're a bit squishy. But do try and get them in line with that groove. And then same goes, do the same going into the groove again, and this fixes it into the back. And then, a bit too close to the edge. just fix it at the top, fix it at the bottom, It doesn't need to be for fixing it in the middle and fixing it at the sides is the important bit. It doesn't have to be tight. And you can see I've got slight overlaps here. That's all right. That'll just mean that the water runs off sideways. And what we've got there is a hinge. So this is something the it's hinge is great. Gravity will hold down. Perfect. Wind comes in. That's going to blow up. So you can see there's an overhang there. That's going to make the water run off forward running away from your shed, running away from your tree to run away from the nest. But what this means is the wind can come up. Also, magpies and squirrels 
and other birds, other predators like to get into nest boxes. Do you know what's in nest boxes? Delicious, delicious, high protein snacks. Eggs and chicks are something that a lot of predators really like to eat. So trying to protect them from that as much as possible. So a good way to do that, what a lot of they do a lot of the time is screw them shut. That's okay if you've got a robin box. So robin boxes, I'll actually use the robin box. You position them much lower. They go at sort of hedge height and you can get those screws out. If you're, up, if you're putting a pit box or something higher up, higher up a building, up in a tree, you don't want to be having to take screws or nails out every time you want to go in the box. You do need to go in the box once a year to clean out any nest material. You need to clean them out, do a little check that the box is in good nick. And to do that, you need to be able to open the lid. And if it's screwed shut and you're up a ladder with your friend holding the ladder at the bottom, never do this on your own. But you're going to really struggle to get those out. So a really simple way to do that. We've got all the tech here. How does my tech? Yeah. So we're going to blame the fact that there's no like pre drilled holes. So we don't want these nails. So they're going into the front piece through the side and the roof through the side. So you want to make sure this is flat on a solid base. And we don't want this to go all the way in. We want to leave about a centimeter, half an inch, poking out the end. So be careful because you don't want it to, to go really into the middle. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to poke it outside. So it just needs to be enough that it's secure, but it needs to be protruding out. See why that is in a minute. Again, be careful with this one because it's not that stable. So just make sure it's sort of as solid as it can be. Oops. See, I'm not pro. And then what we do is we're going to make a loop that secures it. So you just get this inner tube again and you just cut an end off and what you've got here is basically a really strong elastic band so it's still a loop we don't cut down the edge of this one and you just go around the nail say loop it round twice and that's all I'll do the same on the other side you can see we've done that on this one. So we've kind of got two bits there, and that's just, it's really, really secure. But you can just unloop them, unloop that, and there you go. You can open it again. And you can you can do that quite easily one hand, because you want always want three contact points on a ladder. So you can be holding your ladder, you just do that one-handed. And they're really easy to replace. So, yeah, just loop them back round. You might see that quite a lot of birds and the foxes have started doing sort of a metal plate on the front because that's quite often what you see has gone wrong with bird boxes. So every year what we do is we do like a bird box survey. And on the bird box survey, you go around and you check the damage, you check the bottoms. The bottoms quite often rot out. The, these get pecked around by predators coming and pecking at them, trying to get in. Squirrels nibbling at them, trying to get in. So you just want the hole to be as the size it, it wants to be, the right size. The small, birds like a hole that is the smallest size they can fit through because that makes them feel most secure, which is why you've got the kind of weird different graded sizes of like 25 mil, 28 mil, because, yeah, they like the smallest hole they'll fit through because it means the predator is less likely to get through. But a predator likes to make the hole bigger so the predator can get in. And that's kind of why you get these, yeah, this is fiddly with love them. Flip that round and then I'll talk and actually look at the camera. So that's why you get these kind of pecked round big holes. So if the hole's got much bigger, noticeably bigger than it's supposed to be, replace the box, the whole box probably. Um, if the lids come off, you can refix these with these inner tubes. You can just go. So if you're doing your box survey, you want to take your ladders and your friend, 
you want to take a bucket with you, you go around, you carry you empty any nest material out of the box into a bucket, you take it far away, get rid of all of the pests in it. Because if you don't get rid of it, it builds up pests, it builds up parasites. Clothes moths, I'm freaking about. The house I live in at the moment is full of clothes moths, it's awful. But <laughs> it's, well, I was reading about them. Apparently, but they're the native ones. Yeah, they overwinter in bird nests. So it's things like that that you're getting rid of, and also the parasites that will affect the, um, the birds. But also, yeah, doing a safety check, you can replace these, replace the nails, you can even replace the just the roof. It's probably when they start to rot, though, it's kind of easy just to replace the whole box. But yeah, just making sure all of the fitting are secure. Um, we should we should yeah should we say goodbye to tom tom i must say you've got a lot of compliments in the in the comments lots of people saying good work and nice to see you yeah andrea said very impressive tom very impressive <laughs> and again get in contact with us if you fancy having a go yourself it's a really nice thing that tom does making the kits so you still have a bit of ownership over the box like you've assembled it together yourself i'll say the other final thing that the inner tube is for is they're really good for if you're securing it to a tree. Tend to tree. Oh, we can we can take a wonder up in a minute because we can talk yeah. about how high it needs to be. Should we go? Should we go up there now? Yeah. yeah. Have you got any other bits to add, Tom? No, I'll just say a pen tree. As Freya said earlier on, treating them January is the best time. It takes four or five weeks to send human. And never do the inside, I only do the outside. And try and avoid bright colours as well. People quite often will paint really garish designs on them. Birds like natural habitat, so if it's too garish, it's if it draws too much attention, they know that and they know it might draw attention. So, what you can do designs and do nice, quick things. Oh, you can it's do preservers. really quick. So, what Smithers, Smithers Seizure has asked, How do we get the kits? It's a bit difficult. Hazel in the comments. So Hazel can share the email address for Hollywood from the best one to contact her for you, email us, say what you want, how many you want, then we can start a conversation about how we get to you. <laughs> Right. Well, Brilliant. goodbye, Tom. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you Take care, much, everyone. Right, right, shall we head we up? Take <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Tom. So, we won't actually fix it because We've not figured out exactly where it wants to be. Robin Box, it's quite important that you think about the fact that robins are really territorial, and a lot of birds are really territorial. So a lot of birds, um, if you put if you put twenty tit boxes up in one garden, you're not going to get twenty tit nests because twenty they they're territorial. They don't fight over territory in the same way. But if they know that there's another nest there, they're not going to nest right next to that that nest because there won't be enough food. So, yeah, so maybe but if you use a robin box and a tit box at opposite ends of your garden, you're more likely to get a nest in each because they're different birds. So they overlap less in terms of the resources, but they you niche the birds that they fill in the habitat. So we, yeah. we'll go here just as a... Not quite as easy to get to the other side, maybe. So, one super important thing to keep in mind when you're attaching the box is the direction. Um, so, you do not want it south facing, it's the opposite to your plants. I know we've talked in the past a lot about south facing windows and about the beauty of the sunlight from the south, but a bird box wants to stay nice and cool because chicks, they are good at maintaining um, body temperature. They can do it up to 50 degrees Celsius, I read this morning. But that then stunts their growth because they're putting all their energy into sort of regulating their body temperature. So we want to try and make it either 
north facing or east facing, just as long as it's not south facing. South out there. Um, oh, Helen, Helen has said, are you pro or against metal plates to protect the diameter of the hole? Um, if it's stainless steel, I don't see a problem. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a huge amount of bolts. I can see why they do, but to be honest, I think you just need to be prepared to replace your boxes more often because if you have a new, they get pecked a little bit every year. It's it's rare that a new box that's solid is going to get pecked away. It's as the wood starts to rot. It's as the box starts to weaken. We've actually got will we do have a few that um have been pecked around, but I'd say you're better off maintaining the box. I think making the box have bits like that too durable gives this sense that you don't need to maintain it, but the maintenance of it is really, really important because of the parasites and things. If you're like, right, that's there, that looks fine, I'll come back to it in five years, you're not providing a safe habitat for the birds. Even if the magpies and, the, and things can't get in, the ticks and things can, and that's just as likely to kill the, tick, the chicks. So we're actually doing a little bit of... Um, Bodging, let's say, because there's actually another robin box that's fairly nearby. I think this is a robin box. Yeah. It might be a, t a wren. No, it's too big a gap for a wren box. But, um, yeah, so this one has screws in. It doesn't have the hinge on. So imagine it had the hinge. It also, as Tom said, it doesn't have the bit that pokes out the bottom. So this one, I'd actually use this. It's much better attached to a fence or attached to a shed or, some, or something like that because you can then drill it in. But you shouldn't drill into trees because if you drill into trees, firstly, you might damage the wood. You might you add a source of infection into the tree. But also, if you put nails in a tree and then the tree grows, it grows around it. And then down the line, the tree dies. Someone's cutting up with chainsaw. It's really dangerous to have bits of metal put into trees. Like It, can, it could really do someone quite a serious injury. So don't nail boxes into trees. So you might think, well, I'll, when I take the bird box down, I'll definitely get that nail. If it rots here, it falls down. You're not going to find that nail. You're not necessarily like it's so easy to think. if you sell your house and leave the bird box up. Like how responsible is the next person going to be? That sort of thing. Like just also, it just makes this point of weakness it's quite likely to rot. So what we do, we want to position it sort of high, as high as a robin box, sort of as high as you can reach easily. I'd say. You don't want it down here because you know what cats like to do? Cats like to eat small creatures. I think so, for a robin box, it's anywhere between one and two metres. So. Yeah, so about face height, basically. So normally you probably get your... Normally I'd probably be getting Alex to hold this, but obviously there's a plate. So have I got... I've not got a bit long enough. I'll use this narrow. Mm -hmm. So you get these this cut in half in a tube quite good if there is like a little bit like this to do it just above because what that means is if it slips that's going to catch it and then you just and i would say if you're up a, if you if you're doing this up a ladder so if you're doing this with a high a different type of bird box you probably want to do this bit at ground level of attach one end so you cut this in half and you attach one end here you use your frosted staple gun, or if you've just got, you can use just a regular stapler open. You know what? It's actually run out of staples. <laughs> Less trusted. So, yeah, you do, do, do a row of staples along there. It can be tempting to cut this in part, like, into a strip, so it's just one strip. It's actually better to keep it as a tube because it does make it double strength, basically. So you fix that across there, then you wrap that round, and you fix that across there and you pull it quite tight and then you fix that across again and what this means is that because it's rubber if you use wire or something that that's going to cut into the tree or if you use string or rope it's going to cut into the tree as the tree grows and the tree will sort of grow around it and it'll do quite a lot of damage as the tree ages but if you use this rubber it stretches with the tree growing and also it perishes over time so it's not going to stay strangling the tree as the tree gets big. So these will need replacing every couple of years. So do just be prepared. Every time you're doing your bird box, if you've got 
because you know everyone has a woodland and like large amount of area to put loads of different bird boxes like we do at Hollybush. Yeah, chances are you're not going to have sort of twenty odd bird boxes in your garden at home. Um, but if you if you are going, just make sure you've got enough inner tubes to replace as the material used in each bird box you've got and. That's only going to be a couple of inner tubes if you've only got a couple of bird boxes. So yeah, you do a loop around the top. If you're doing around a tree, this is where it's useful to have that strip at the bottom because we've got it fixed at the top. But look at that, look at that. So having that little strip at the bottom means that you can then do exactly the same thing as we've done there. Wrap another one around the bottom there and that'll just fix it. It'll hold it tight. This isn't quite bob square. Like if you've got your spirit level out, it's not flat. It needs to be fairly flat. But don't, yeah, you don't, you're better off holding onto your ladder and staying safe if you're up a ladder than trying to get it dead level. And yeah, that's our bird box. Have you got any, have we got any more questions? Has anyone got anything that they'd like us to add? If you do have questions, if you, so we're doing this live, but these videos will still be online. So if you are watching this, back after the fact then just ask us a question in the comments we'll get a notification about it if you're on youtube as well we'll be able to see those comments and we should be able to answer you in the conversation under that if you've got any questions now now is the chance to ask ask them for us mm -hmm. to answer in the video um yeah there is a little thing that we want to show you just before we Ooh, finish yeah. so we're we're talking about bird boxes um <laughs> but in one of the small little roofs we've got here um we've got a nest and i think is it from is it from last year yeah it was the year before last i don't actually know if, the, if they came back it was here before last um april last year and they were in the same Oh, so uh, Elizabeth Isaac has asked, if you don't have access to inner tube, what else could you use? Anything... So the inner tubes, um, I don't know if you heard a bit earlier. I would say if you've got access to a recycling shop, a bike shop, you've got a uh, Halfords, an Evan Cycle, uh, like anywhere that fixes bicycles, just go into the bike shop and say, excuse me, do you have any old knackered inner tubes? And chances are they've got one or two in their bins because... People going in and getting uh, punctures repaired and inner tubes replaced is one of the most common jobs that um, bike shops do. So the chances are that any bike shop you go into will gladly give you an old inner tube that's come out of their scrap pile. So they are really, really simple to get a hold of for free. If you don't have access to that, if you don't know how you do that, we had some offcuts of Onliner. That we were using so you can use onliner i'd say it's probably easier to get hold of in the tube than it is onliner mm -hmm. uh, if i mean if you're really struggling and you don't want to go you could always use a bit of fabric for the hinge really it will need replacing sooner yeah, something waterproof because it does make that mm -hmm. waterproof joint um anything old pvc sofa that's, that you find that's been fly tipped somewhere you could take some of that <laughs> sort of plastic fake leather um so it's kind of the stretchiness, the flexibility of it. Lino flooring, that's quite, if you've got some flexible lino, that's quite a good thing. Um, be on the hunt for skips. Any skips on your street, there might be some old sort of 1970s lino. Roofing felt, that could be quite a good thing. Um, yeah, flexible and waterproof is the important thing. So I think you could, I guess, I, I, I don't know, like, could you use some really tough bags? I don't know how much that would a bag you, a bag for life one of the really thick ones one of those like freezer ones that you get I don't yeah I can't vouch for any of that I'd say if you can get me get hold of some onliner or some inner tubes that's probably so. your best bet oh Jane has just said um, that there might be an old nest in one of the fruit trees at the side of the holly bush mm -hmm. the project tunnel yes, so but here you can see in the rafters of this roof if I can get the camera in this is a bird's nest and I don't know if you can see it clearly on the camera right in the center of the screen right now you can see it sort of spirals into a hole and that's where so this was a wren that was nesting in here so yeah spring before last we it was definitely investigating it last um 
went last spring as well. But I've given up smoking, so I've spent less time here. So I don't know if it was actually nesting. And also there was a lot less peak. There was no one coming in sight apart from the odd member of staff to do safety checks. So we don't know for definite if it nested here or not last year, just because we were paying less attention. Oh, I think but if it hasn't, there's probably quite a juicy spider in there right now because spiders will... It, that's another thing. If you're a bit squeamish of spiders and you're clearing out your bird box, if it's had a nest in it, expect there to be some spiders because the heat that these can provide, the insulation, they're, they're, yeah. they're really, really good. Um, and this, so this is a nest site. It, they do quite often use the same nest site year on year. So the, there was definitely a round investigating this one last year. Whether or not it used it, we don't know. Obviously, this one has not cleared out the nesting material, but that's because we can't get in there. It's a natural site. But if we're making a non natural habitat box, it's important to clear it out regularly. If you're clearing them out, it's really important that you do that, take consideration of if it's still going to be used as a site. So you don't want to do it any time that they might be nesting. You might see fledglings go and be like, oh, the fledglings have left. That means I can clear out the nest box. Don't, because they quite, quite a lot of birds will try and do a second brood. Sometimes it's the third brood if it's a hot autumn, a hot, long um, breeding season. So leave it until, I'd say, I'd say late November, because another thing that can happen is sometimes you can end up, as Alex said, spiders love it. They are not the only animal that love it. I've had it once. Luckily, it was completely outside um, the season that it was active. But you open the bird box to clean it out, and oh, I just yeah. ripped in half a wasp's nest. So, which is fine. If you do that after late November, the very end of November, December, that's absolutely fine because all of the wasps have moved on. October, start of November, wasps can still be active. So do just bear in mind, if you start doing your clearing out too early on, then you're at risk of disrupting the nesting season and you're also at risk of, I mean, you may well have noticed if you've got a little garden that there's a wasp's nest in it. Unfortunately, if you've got a large site, this was a skelet grain, there are other sites south leads, which is 10 acres with a lot of bird boxes. So it's quite easy to not notice if there's a bird, uh, wasp's nest in a high up nest. But it is just worth bearing in mind that you want to wait until things have properly gone into dormancy, so things have properly gone into winter yeah. before you do it. It's also really important. So Tom mentioned earlier about um, if you put things up in, the earlier you put things up, the less human sense on it, the more likely the birds are to go, this doesn't smell of smelly human, I'm going to make this my house. But also, exactly, smelly human. Um, the If you do things in winter, so if you put the bird box up, when you're doing that check, when you're doing that emptying, when you're doing that clear out in sort of at the end of November, start of December, you can then put up the new boxes. You can then do all of this clearing out. And that means that it's a nice, clean and safe environment for them to roost in because birds still roost when they're not um, in breeding season. So the territorial ones, the ones that stay put, will still be using those nest boxes. They'll be going like, oh, this is quite a nice, cozy place for me to spend my winter. And that means that if they've been spending it the time in them over winter, when it comes to spring, like now when they're investigating all the different nest sites, being like, am I going to make this my house? Am I going to make this my house? They will know that that's there. So they're much more likely to nest in a box that has been up for at least a winter. But it's so it's not uncommon. This is the sort of time of year that you can really start putting bird boxes up and start thinking like, oh, the birds are like chattering in a way. I'm going to put a bird box up. It's really quite likely in your first year, you're not going to get birds nesting in it. And the second year, it becomes much more likely. And then you're sort of maintaining it. And year on year, it becomes more likely that you're going to get birds nesting in it. If it's damaged, if the hole's bigger, they're less likely to nest in it. If, if, it's it's... In it, if you put it in a tree this time of year and there's a branch and you think, oh, it's fine. It's not in the way. And then suddenly that branch springs to life and gets covered in leaves. And it's mm. then obstructing the front of the box. They're not going to use it. They want a nice clear flight path into the box. Clear flight path. And if it's noisy, if it's, I mean, we say this, you do all of these things, you do all these specific things, and then the wren just goes and makes yeah. a nest in the middle yeah. of the smoking area. Best laid plans um, and mice and men. Just it completely yeah. ignores all the surrounding habitat boxes. You'll quite often find that. You'll have a habitat box. You'll go to clear it out. You'll be like, there's nothing in it. And then you look over there, and there's a nest right next to it in the tree. It's like, what do you want from me? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Which is fine. You still got a bird's nest. <laughs> if if you have any further questions, we will be monitoring the comments for for the rest of the day. So if you've got anything, shoot it our way, and we'll do our best to answer it. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, yeah. thank you very much for joining us. And again, thanks to thank Tom for his words of wisdom. It was, yeah. it was really quite good. Thank you, everybody. And if you've got any habitat type things <laughs> or any topics you want, we'll be doing these live streams every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Oh, I can't even remember what next week's is. We will we'll we'll, we'll tell you about that yeah. later. But if there's any topics that you want us to cover, then if there's any habitat related things, nature related things, gardening, growing related things, the conservation related thing that you've always wanted to know about, do let us know in the comments, do get in touch and let us know. We'll try and do a live stream letting you know. And we've also on Facebook, on the Hollywood Facebook and also on the Skelton Grange Facebook, we've got a back, particularly on the Skelton Grange Facebook actually, we've got a back catalogue of videos we've made all through last lockdown and this lockdown and they're also now going on to youtube so these videos are available to watch after the fact so if you think anyone would be interested in this then do um forward on the links and if they're not on facebook then there is the youtube one as well is that a question it was just helen repeating what you said about the birds what do you want from me that's, <laughs> that's often the way we've tried to build habitat is that uh, they they want what they want, and it's not always what we think they want. But these the tips we've done today are a really good starting point for trying to improve habitat in your garden or any space. You said like you don't need to attach them to a tree. If you don't have a tree, you can attach a bird box to a wall. We've actually got some swift boxes that are quite high up on the outside of the building there. Should I shut up? I think it's time. I wasn't gonna say. No, but yeah, thank you very good. much for joining us. If you've been inspired, if you've got bird box of your own. Pop them in the comments. We'd love to see your pictures. If you've got any bird box cameras as well, we'd love to see. Oh, yeah, we're looking that. at getting a bird box ca yeah. camera for here. So fingers crossed we will be having a bird cam at some point. But thank you very much for joining us. Uh, come back, same place, same time next week, 11 a.m. on Wednesday. So Thanks, thank everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.